with reports showing agriculture contributing about 25% of Nigeria's GDP. We take a look at President Muhammad Buhari's advice to Nigerians to go back to the farm with the big question, is farming the answer? And also, as the people of Zamfara State mourn, the president advises Nigerians to be patient. How does a nation react to the reported killing of about 200 of its citizens? As always, we journey through the papers and review the big stories making the headlines. With that, we say good morning and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Good to have you here. I am Osaogi Ogbonwang. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Monday morning. Absolutely. Our two major conversations this morning are on agriculture and security. The president, of course, uh, quoted in an interview sometime last week asking Nigerians to go back to farms you know, and stressing on how important it is for Nigeria's economy to grow. And of course, we're going to be looking at that and asking if that truly is what is lacking in Nigeria. There are certain figures that we would also be looking at and uh, what uh, level of support the Nigerian government truly has given to agriculture. And aside that, we're going to be taking a, a look at secu security in Zamfara State. How does a nation really and truly react to the death of 200 people, maybe even more? Silence from the presidency, silence from the National Assembly, and maybe also silence from its citizens. Uh, that makes uh, also part of our discussions this morning. But before that, as always, we start with top trending stories, uh, starting with security. And now we're in Kebi State, where about 30 students of... Um, uh, the uh, Benin Yari school have regained their freedom. Uh, they have been in captivity to, for 207 days. And if you remember some time in October 2021, about 30 of them were also released. One of them was reported to have died in captivity. Uh, but of course, another 30 and, uh, um, and a teacher were released uh, over the weekend. Um, of course, making it about 60 that have been released so far. Um, it's an ongoing conversation. And of course, the reports say that they have been taken to the state capital for a medical examination and uh, debriefing. Um, of course, we, I'm guessing that they will also meet with the governor of the state. Well, um, so as much as a lot of people would say it's actually a step in the right direction, but there are several questions surrounding it. That's number one. Uh, after 207 days, you have this person's regaining freedom. I remember vividly where a lot of appreciation has been given to security agencies, uh, men of the force, uh, you know, forces. Uh, for the rescue effort that has been made. So the question here is, where are the abductors? I mean, those who captured this student, were they also mm -hmm. arrested? You know, that's the question. Uh, after how many days now, you know, yes, it's okay to say the police or whoever, uh, maybe the, uh, the Nigerian army or any of the force that was involved in the rescue. And we're saying kudos to them. But what happens to those um, persons who, uh, you know, captured the student in the first place? Have they been arrested? Uh, is it that um, these persons just regain freedom? Did we pay any money to, you know, allow these kids actually go through? Because that, these are some other questions we, we need to, you know, answer. And the question over time is, how come we constantly have these persons, I mean, these bandits, these kidnappers, being emboldened on a daily basis, on a year-to-year -year basis, on a monthly basis? So um, some of this, yes, the, the, the whole effort is saying, oh, we, we commend the security agencies and everybody for ensuring the rescue of these kids. But how come we have not been able to arrest them? Why? Uh, well, you know, and these are, these are you know, good questions um, because, you know, I think we've repeat, repeatedly said it that over time, in the last 10 years, maybe, you know, uh, plus, um, we still haven't, and I think one of the guests said it last week, that we still haven't been able to point to any actual terrorist leader or bandit leader that has been arrested and is currently being prosecuted or has been, you know, is in jail. There's none. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense that a country that is dealing with this level of violence and killing and, and the likes... Um, has nobody, you know, that currently is, you know, standing trial, nobody who currently we can point to as a bandit leader or a terrorist leader that, that is standing trial. Yes, the reports of them being killed here and there, but um, is, is that, you know, what Nigeria would be, you know, bold to boast of, that there's nobody that we currently have arrested, and, and that includes those who have released students in the past, because it's not the first time we're hearing that students have regained freedom, you know, young Nigerians have regained freedom. 
Um, but when they regain freedom, what next? You know, do they go back? You know, to the and, forest and, and what go back premise? To the field you to look for more to kidnap. You know, and some of all of that. Um, um, so, so these are you know legitimate questions. But also remember that another thing that is stunning here is that Nigeria actually forgot these people. Let's be honest. These people were in captivity <laughs> for 207 days. Nigeria forgot them. They've not been in the news in the last couple of weeks or months. Nobody spoke about them during Christmas. Nobody spoke about it at them at the end of last year. So we actually did forget that there were people in captivity. And J they just as we were forgotten about Leah Shaibu. Absolutely. I, you, you, you know, so it's just, um, um, first of all, I think that at some point you have the people being fatigued about some of the stories. So, so, so you have an incident happening, and after a while we move away from it. Mostly sometimes it becomes a social talk. Uh, we just talk about it and talk about it, and that's the end. We'll probably just have one or two balls on, you know, the social media, and that's the end. There's no commitment. There's no action from the part of the people, and I'm from the government. I am curious, and I'm asking, with all of the fact that we constantly have people, you know, regaining their freedom, uh, with what premise are we looking at? Are we paying ransom? I know several times the government has, you know, the, the rumor that, uh, you know, ransom's not being paid. Or is it that those who are affected are the ones paying ransom for their kids and, you know, their uh, loved ones to be released? Mm -hmm. And so you constantly ask yourself, with the fact that schools have been attacked, you know, for, you know, a long time now, we constantly see the attack on schools. You want to ask yourself, what happened to the Safe School Initiative that, you know, was put out in 2014 and, and all? And because with all of these programs and policies, it's not just hearsay, it's not just mere statement. Resources have been released. So what happens to it? The essence of having, you know, the school safe initiative at the end of the day was to ensure that there's some sort of protection. I mean, these schools have perimeter fencing and what have you, because you know that some of these schools are in isolation. Not, not necessarily that, um, you know, it doesn't stop the attacks and what have you. But I feel like we just pay lip service. It's just about we saying, oh, we're, we're, we're fighting these people. We're combating it. Oh, and there's really um, no action. There's no honesty. There's no transparency in all that we see. The, the safe school initiative for me, you know, is pretty much the same thing with the school feeding program. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it has you know, almost no effect in protecting the students or mm -hmm. keeping the students in school because safety initiative is what building high fences or, or putting one or two security personnel at the gates. It doesn't stop anything, um, you know, with regards to the... So, so the, even the if it doesn't stop persons. anything, are we even doing it? I mean, it's on paper, I guess. Um, once again, these people were forgotten. If there was no news, and, 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 and on record, there's 102 students that were kidnapped in this case. 30 were released sometime in October. Uh, this is another 30, so, you know, I'm guessing that there are still some of them that are still in captivity or maybe may never be found. And, and the Nigerian government does, doesn't does seem to care. No, we care. Because we you know, in a sane society and in a sane country, this would make the headlines every day. And I remember someone who was quoting um, something that we're going to talk about later, and that is the Zamfara State incident. You know, someone who was quoting it and saying that when um, there was an incident in New Zealand or in the United States or, or in other societies, you would see their prime minister their you know the uh, chief of police in that state would constantly be on television every six hours max explaining to people what's happening giving citizens updates with regards you know rescue efforts or you know what has happened with the perpetrators of whatever crime that it was until you know that case is seemingly solved we had 200 people killed according to reports last week we barely even spoke about it you and i we barely even spoke about it, you know, um, um, in the news. And over the weekend, there's still no response from the Nigerian government to, you know, with regards to the killing of those people. So what, what, who, how does that same Nigerian government really care about people who have been in captivity? I saw a report over the weekend also of some, um, some old elderly man somewhere in northern Nigeria who had to take off um, the roofing sheets on his, on his property because he was trying to raise money to pay ransom for his son. Um, and that's, you know, response to some of the questions you asked with regards to if you're paying, you know, if you're paying ransom or not. The Nigerian government and the Nigerian people, you might call it fatigue because we've heard so many of these stories. But, you know, the point here is that the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people completely forgot that there have been persons in captivity for 207 days and counting. And so if these people weren't, re weren't um, released now or didn't escape, I'm not sure which it is, we would have gone till March, April. June, September 2022, and nobody would remember that there are people in captivity except the parents of these children. No, so so it's 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 become very common in our society where you see that um, as long as it doesn't happen to you. I remember a time where you know I was on the street and then of course trying to get questioned the vox pop and all of that, 
And you, you hear people telling you, as long as it doesn't affect me and my family, mm -hmm. it's not my business. Yeah. So we have become, you know, very self-centered people as, you know, as individuals. And of course, we constitute the entire society and at large Nigeria. So you have, you know, pockets of people. You have people like this with this ideology who would say that it's not my business. As long as it does not affect me, it does not affect, I mean, I'm able to, you know, afford the basic things yeah. of life. It was my business. But, and, and that's why we, you, you know, you know how we also think about it's not my business who becomes a president and who becomes a governor of a state. But you know whether or not we want to agree that government policy will yeah, always, yeah. would always affect us. Yeah, and so yeah, some um, people would tell you, I mean, for the religion, they say we, we don't operate in this economy. You do, darling, operate in this economy. As long as you, yes, it's true. Because when the government come with some kind of policies that would truncate your business. You would understand that you operate in this well, economy. pastor said that. No, I mean, you have a lot of people who just begin to make proclamations. I do not live in this economy. I do not operate under this economy. You operate. <laughs> Bear in mind, you know, and this is where we're going to you know, end. That, you know, that's something else, light, well, that's something else happened note. in Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. Bear in mind that, you know, while 200 people were reportedly killed in Zamfara over the weekend, um, President Muhammad Abari, who's the uh, commander in chief, you know, said nothing. Um, the only news from him is that, you know, he met with former president, Goodluck Jonathan. The vice president was in Bauchi for some occasion. I think he's, he's currently in Ghana um, or something. Well, I'm just saying over the weekend, you know, you know, he, a couple of days after or a day after that, you know, happened, he was in some event in, in, in Bauchi uh, celebrating. I'm not sure what exactly what event that was or what celebration that was or what party that was. Um, and that just tells you the, the mindset of the people who are in power. And of course, what Brisky was chased out of being in. Those were the conversations, you know, across Nigeria. Wow, 200 people lost their lives in Zamfara. And up until this moment, you have the 19 governors, you know, of a northern state. Yeah. No statement whatsoever, you know, from all of, uh, you know, from these governors. It all just right. shows you, like, we, like I constantly would say that, you know, we, can't, we have lost humanity. We have lost it. Let's move away from Nigeria. We will be back uh, to Brazil now, where a very shocking, you know, uh, triggering video uh, was of course, uh, put out over the weekend of a rock, a very large rock that collapsed on two boats, you know, uh, people who were holidaying somewhere in, uh, on the beaches in Brazil. I hope that we have that video clip to share with you. Um, it's reported that it led to the loss of about seven lives, about 10 people were injured and currently about three are missing. Yes, that's, that's it. Um, really shocking. Um, some people have blamed um, climate change, others have said Mother Earth is angry. Maybe, you know, somebody whispered something to the rock that wasn't uh, really, really nice, or they threw a, you know, a water bottle at the rock or something. I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but um, it has led to the loss of about seven lives. Um, and, you know, still reported, you know, some of them very likely hospitalized, uh, trying to, uh, hoping that they would recover. But very, very, very shocking um, video there. You know, I'm, I'm not even sure how anybody would have reacted in a situation like that if you need to, you know, steer the boat sideways to avoid the impact. But this is really, 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 sh really shocking. I, I, it just reminds me of an experience that, um, you know, I think way back I had, I had a friend, a young friend who, you know, experienced and escaped this because I think out of six of them, you know, four made it out and two actually died. Quite unfortunate. And, you know, at this point, you begin to ask yourself, who should we blame that on? Climate change, or, you know, some people would say it would be uh, village people. You know, in our panels here, would say it would be village people. But it's, I mean, it's really sad. Do we have, should the people have control? I mean, those who could actually organize, you know, that outing, is there anything that Very they would have done? And I, mean, all no, I don't think so. It's, it's, it's just yeah, an it's just an accident. It's, it's, it happens, and that's why it's an accident. Yeah. It's pretty much know. the same thing with driving and, and lightning strikes a vehicle. You, who, you, who do you blame? You know, or um, it, there's, there's different but, but, know, but for me, that could just happen. Because for me, it's usually, I mean, I just have this wild, crazy thought. I would probably not want to go close to the rocks. I just want to stay, you know, very far. You could, so there's, and there's, even if you want to stay far off, you could also have, you know, a crocodile come through or something. These aren't things that you can you. ever expect or you can, you know, True. It's an cool accident. Happen. And it's rocks very don't just fall off, you know, um, you know, from, you know, formation. It's different you think if, if it's a landslide or if it's an avalanche or something like that. Th those are different. You know, you can you can tell that there are certain triggers uh, for an avalanche. But for, for a situation like this, you can't expect it. Nobody, you know, would expect that a rock would really just fall in, into the water. So it's just 
an unfortunate incident for those uh, persons. And um, of course, we wish uh, you know the very best to their families. Condolences to the families of those um, uh, persons who lost their lives over there. Well, so we just move on to another issue again, uh, just a similar case with that of Sylvester Romani. I mean, we're still dealing with the uh, issues surrounding his death, uh, negligence, bullying, and what have you in the statement. Now, another sad incident happened somewhere in Anambra State. A young boy, he was just 11 years old, has died. And according to this report, it's alleged that uh, it had to do with negligence on the part of the school. So the young boy was reported to have been ill and the school insisted that he had to finish his exams before um, they could contact the parents. I mean, so that's the story that um, he couldn't actually, uh, his parents were not contacted because they insisted that he had to finish. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know if I'd say it's fortunately, uh, the young lad actually had a brother or cousin in the school who found a way, you know, to put a call across uh, to the parents to say, hey, this boy is actually ill. You need to come to his rescue and his aid. Of course, we also had reports saying that the young boy was actually punished for making that call because the school would say, uh, you know, students are not allowed to put a call. It's just on the path of the school to put up that call. But as always, you would also have the fact that people would always want to protect their interests. And so there's also another part of the story where they say the principal of the school has come out to deny all of that, saying that was not the case. The boy was very fine, hale and hearty. He was about his business. And even though he, he took ill, he had malaria, he was treated by a proper nurse in the school. And after, you know, after all of that, um, then he took ill, you know. So the stories are usually not, um, uh, you can't find a balance with it. But in this case, quite different from what Sylvester, in Sylvester's case, has not been buried. In this case, the young boy has been buried just as two student. And I think he happens to be, uh, you know, the only son of the family. Very sad. So it still brings us back to whether or not that's the case or you know, the principal is right or the principal is not right and as it is now and it's not that the parents are actually pushing and advocating for justice how do you even explain all of that because in cases like this it is almost impossible for you to begin to have the evidence you know to put together to, to press charges and ask for justice but mm -hmm. you can only imagine what you know parents will be going through the family you know the sadness in their heart and I, it, it's just you know what really breaks my heart in all of this is the fact that we pay so much attention so we make the laws and i ask myself if you make these laws laws were created they were not created by spirit human being make 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 these laws and so if you have a semester where a student has to write an exam and then the child actually takes ill is it is it compulsory that the child has to write the exam that after that time there's no provision you know for the child to sit for that exam must the child take the exam you know he has to finish the exam first before i mean haven't we because we're evolving we need to begin to in our institutions make consideration for all of this so children who would probably fall ill and can't make it for the exam they should also have provision for having special exams conducted i mean extra exams for them because the health is well i mean it's only the living that can write exams so that's why i always say that as much as it is you fall ill it's important to pay attention to your health because if you're not alive you can't be doing the job you can't go to school you can't write the exams now the young lad has written the exams let's even assume that that's uh, you know something to go by because we're unable to you know to put the facts in but most importantly the issue of negligence is very key in our institution and we yeah. have to pay attention then i constantly ask myself what happened to pta you know, because I remember being in school way back, PTA was such a big deal where you have parents come through Jesus, and, you know, put, put out, you know, the consents of the children. But that's not the case anymore. Is it that parents are not advocating for PTAs? Are they too busy to attend? Or the school is not even ensuring that, you know, you have PTA meetings anymore. So all of this, we can't constantly. And it brings us back to the fact that we, we don't pay attention to the lives of human beings. And I always say that, you know, we're just a reflection of who we are. And some people would argue differently. Now that you can't, you don't, you don't I mean, the, the, the life of the little child or, you know, child under your care, because you are to protect and they're paying for all of this. And then you don't think that a child is ill, it's important to pay attention rather than having the child write the exams. You know, so we've seen there are too many cases that haven't been reported. But I'm hoping that, you know, parents would be, you know, up and doing in 2022. And schools also, and government would also ensure that we protect these children. Because we, we we can't continue like this and expect a different result. Well, um, uh, you know, in this case, you know, like you stated, you know, it's pretty, it's you know, it's similar, you know, but different from the Sylvester Romani case. Um, you know, there there hasn't been any you know particular foul play that has been you know um, uh, stated here. Um, it's an unfortunate you know situation. I understand that um, you know Nigeria has a very high rate with regards deaths from malaria and, and typhoid and, and the likes. Um, 
you know, and this might just be one of um, of those. Um, but yes, you know, it is important to know and ask the questions with regards how much you know healthcare proper, um, medical um, as, um, assistance that he was that we have in school yeah. while he was ill. Um, if he was denied medical assistance, if he was denied any of that, does the school even have a proper you know um, healthcare center? Um, and some of all of that, you know, those are the questions that I believe that you know must be asked at a time like this. Um, it's not, you know, like he was murdered or anything. No, um, he wasn't. You know, but you know, it might there might be some bits of negligence here and there, and questions need to be asked properly, you know, with regards to the healthcare system that exists in the school on, on you know, on the school. Um, are those kids protected? And these are, you know, this these are things that you would expect, you know, that um, the uh, Ministry of Education in every state, you know, would be able to cross check with every school. The same way that they go around, you know, asking that, you know, there's fire extinguishers and some, there's certain things that just need to be in place before a parent or a citizen is able to entrust their, the lives of their child into, you know, a school. Um, but we don't do enough of those checks. You know, we don't verify some of all those things. Um, and in situations like this, this, you know, are, are situations where a school like that should be highly sanctioned. Um, if it is found out that they don't have proper Medicare for um, students that they are meant to be taking care of. But that's not a society that we live in. We're only going to say, um, you know, it's unfortunate and, you know, everybody moves on. Um, but those are the questions. And I feel like the Nigerian government needs to make an example of certain schools across Nigeria, um, um, close them down temporarily, shut them down for a session, shut them down for, for a term, you know, so that by the time you lose the amount of, uh, you know, uh, school fees money for one year or two years, then they would sit up and ensure that they understand the value of every life that is put in, in their care. Um, but once again, this one, we still need to get clarity on exactly what, what played out in the situation. Um, and if there was any foul play or not, doesn't seem like there was. Um, might just be one of unfortunate incidents where malaria or some of those, you know, um, common illnesses across Nigeria, unfortunately, took the life of this child. Um, if there was foul play, if it was a, as a result of negligence, um, 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 uh, below par medical care in the school, then some of those questions but, to be asked. Yeah, um, true, tr tr true, you know, all of that. Uh, you know, like I rightly mentioned, uh, weren't able to understand what exactly the situation is. But th there are several cases where uh, you would want to agree that this has actually happened, where we feel like, you know, it's period for examination and that the kid has to. I'm, I'm saying that we, you know, schools would need to begin to understand that it's important that, you know, you only need to be alive. I mean, health is very important. Maybe, yeah. you know, if we had, if there was a quick response, because but, however... But this this is why I said, you mm -hmm. know, that there needs to be questions asked with regards to the health um, uh, care center on campus, on, on the school, mm -hmm. or in the school, rather. Um, there's nothing stopping a child from writing an exam while they are ill or after, you know, they recover. Um, as long as they have proper medical care, in school, you don't necessarily need to call the parents to come and take your child. Your child but but, is sick. but but most in most cases, you find out that that's what happens. I mean, I have. I mean, this is not hearsay, first hand. So it feels like some of the schools don't have, you know, proper medical care. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have, you know, like that's a proper because well, you you begin to begin to ask yourself, do we even need to put a call across, you know, to the parents to come pick when mm -hmm. they can so be not treated to come in pick, school? But you should, but the parents should, should be notified be the norm. that your child is not feeling very well. Um, if it's something that is an emergency, on the, if it's on that level where they need the parents to come take their child to a general hospital or to a better hospital, then yes, they will be told. But if it's a slight fever, if it's something that is not so serious that the school's um, healthcare center can handle, then you know they, they should handle it, but they, the parents must be told. So these are where we need to question, you know, were the parents informed at all? Were they aware that the kid was, was ill for a couple of days before he eventually got complicated and he passed or not? And if he wasn't, then of course there should, there's, there's one part of this whole story that deserves one sanction or the other. And those are the things that we're not very sure of. But rest in, uh, in peace to that little boy. Nobody, no parent um, ever, you know, wants to bury their child at uh, that age or at any age, to be honest. Those are our top trend stories this morning. We'll take a short break and, of course, uh, come back with uh, today, um, not today in history now, of the press and share with you what major stories are making headlines across Nigeria today. We'll be back.